Welcome back. It is day three of my five part mini series where I thrift flip old dress shirts. Today I'm going to be making one of these bungee shirts. It is by a brand called Nina Henson. Sorry, I'm just gonna pull up their website. Nina Henson is a women's wear label based in Vancouver, BC. All items are handmade with a focus on upcycling and sustainable manufacturing practices. Yay. An elevated update to the classic button up. The bungee shirts are reworked vintage button ups with adjustable bungee cords cut out, which highlight your waist. These shirts can be worn with denim, trousers, or a skirt, or buttoned all the way down, or undone, fitted, or oversized. These versatile shirts are effortless and flattering on all body types. Each piece is completely one of a kind. So basically you can take this concept of like bunching at the sides to cinch at the waist and make it fit you without having to do a bunch of alterations. So if you like gained weight or lost weight, it would still fit you, which is honestly, how all clothing should work, let's be for real. Clothing should be made to fit a body instead of us trying to fit it. But anyways, that is a whole conversation in and of itself. So let's get back on track, okay? Um, now that I know that it, these are actually made in Canada, I feel obligated to tell you to go and buy some <laughs> instead of making it. But if you don't have $160 to drop on one shirt, I am here for you, okay? I'm gonna show you how to make um, a similar version. Of course, it won't be exactly the same as the original because I am not a wizard, um, but it'll be close enough, okay? Like from a distance, you wanna be able to tell it apart, okay? Let's get into it. So I'm going with this one because it's the most structured. Like I'm really trying to mimic that office core aesthetic that these shirts have and a big part of that is the fabric itself because a lot of the dress shirts that i have are kind of flimsy like they're giving like vacation collared shirt not i'm going into work nine to five collared shirt so that's why i'm going with this one that being said the lack of color mm -mm. We're gonna have to change that. <laughs> You're probably completely bored of me doing this, but I am gonna add yarn. The pattern is gonna look something like this. I've done this countless times before, but what can I say? It slays every time. So I'm thinking we do a two-toned moment here with the pink on one side and the green on the other. Or I mix the two so they're both intertwined. Ugh, these are the moments where I wish I could ask you your opinion, but this isn't a live stream, so I'm gonna just go with my initial vision, which is the half-half situation. All I really need to do here is place the yarn down in the way I think looks the cutest, pin it down, then stitch it down. Do the same with the green yarn by placing it how you'd like it. Pin it, then stitch, stitch, stitch until we get something like this. Do, 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 do. Adding the yarn took way longer than I thought. I spent the past three days tacking this all down, okay? The front and back was pretty straightforward, but the sleeves, the sleeves, oh my goodness, they literally took forever. My first thought was to like open this side seam up of the sleeve so I could stitch all the yarn down flat, but that would have just taken forever trying to put it back like properly, you know? So I decided that I was gonna maneuver my way through the armhole here as my little space. And so having to sew and then reposition, sew and then reposition took just as long. Anyways, this whole adding yarn situation was my own doing. So I just gotta live my choices. Okay, okay. After all that, it's finally time to get down to business. In terms of the shape, we essentially want the shirt to go from this to this. So the first thing you wanna do is determine where your waist is, then carefully scrunch while lifting the shirt up and pulling the fabric from the back so it sits tightly at the waist. Grab some hair ties and fix it in place. 
Make the necessary adjustments. For instance, if there is too much slack at the back, tighten your knot and vice versa. So if it's too tight at the front, loosen it up. I made sure it wasn't too tight at the front though because I'd like the button panel to lay flat. Don't want any unnecessary bulging. Take it off, then open it up. Grab some pins and mark the points where the fabric touches. This will help us determine how big of a hole we'll have to cut out. Undo the hair ties, then voila. Do the same to the other side. Okay, so now for some maths. Kinda, not really. Just the part where the numbers finally come in. We're gonna mark down the following measurements. The distance between the armhole to top marking, armhole to bottom marking, the distance from left side marking to the shirt's side seam, and then the right side marking to the shirt's side seam. Do the same thing for the pink side, then find the common number between the two. If you wanna be super accurate, you could always just do the math, but I like to just go with what feels right. <laughs> I could just feel the seamstresses watching this video going, just do the math. I know, okay, going with what feels right is the last thing you wanna hear when someone says math is involved. But I'm just doing this for fun and I don't wanna stress about it having to be absolutely perfect, so you just gotta learn to let go and just go with a number you vibe with or think makes the most sense. Anyways, these are the measurements I'm going with. This means that on both the green and pink side, I'm going to measure down four inches from the armhole, place a mark, then 10 inches down the armhole and place a mark. In the center of those two measurements, I'm going to measure out three inches from the left and the right of the shirt's side seam. Place my markings, then connect those markings in the form of a circle slash oval. It depends on your numbers. Cut it out. If you don't want to mark out those numbers twice, like on both the left and right side of the shirt, you could just do it once, then use the shape you just cut out as a pattern on the other side. Beautiful. Double fold hem the openings. On curvy shapes like this, I like to press the folds first on an iron before taking it to the machine. We will be feeding some elastic slash cord slash yarn through this later, so make sure the openings and folds are wide enough to feed whatever you choose to use through. Stitch, 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 then press that wrinkly hem down. Since this is called the bungee shirt, I feel the need to use these round elastics. However, they do not match the shirt at all, so I'm gonna use matching yarn instead. I'm gonna use a little safety pin to feed the yarn through, then use one of these stopper thingies at the end. The internet says they're called cord stoppers or cord locks, but I've never heard anyone refer to them as such, so to me, they will stay nameless. <laughs> Anyways, just gotta do the same thing to the other side off camera, then we'll jump to the reveal in three, two, one. This is how it looks like before the scrunching, then once we pull on them, bam. Other side, bam. Even though the swivelly yarn design was rather chaotic and time consuming to add on, it's what gives the shirt the extra bit of kick I was looking for. So I have no choice but to give this flip a 10 out of 10. I mean, I do have to figure out how to style this because Gray tights really aren't doing this shirt justice. If you were to skip on adding the yarn, I definitely recommend this um, for any and all beginner sewers. This flip was pretty darn straightforward. Not a complicated upcycle at all. Even if you have to use like a glue gun instead of a needle and thread, this is definitely worth the try. Well, that's all I have for you today. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any ideas on what I should do next, please let me know in the comment section below. I was thinking this, or maybe this. I don't know, you help me decide. <laughs> don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.